Hey, so it's Rob from Snack Time Records, and um, we're here with Eric of West Meets West. Hello. And he's going to walk us a little bit through his, uh, his bass rig. Yeah, um, it's a pretty basic setup, not nearly as expansive as, uh, as my bandmates, but it, you know, it, it works really well for me. Uh, I've done a lot of like switching around with stuff, but this has kind of been like my board for the last year and a half or so. I've been pretty happy with it. Have you been uh, sticking with this Jaguar this whole time? Yeah, this, this is my baby. Um, I absolutely love this bass. Ever since I first started playing guitar, this is like the one that I wanted to get. So uh, it's a funny story how I got it, but we don't have to go into that. I'm just really happy to, to hang on with this. I, I, I tend to prefer the Japanese vendors. They're, they're really good quality stuff, and they're not nearly as expensive as the Americans. They so get the job done. They get the job done. Yeah. And, cool. and this thing, like, so you can see here, this looks like mission control here with all the knobs and switches and stuff. Um, Got your pickup switches. And yeah, these are my two pickup switches, and they work really well as like a mute. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. A lot of people see me doing that, and they're like, "What are you doing there?" And it's just bam, just turning it off. So, so. so you and Sam, you guys kind of syncopate when you have like your mutes. There's dead silence. Yeah. Something happens. And the reason I love this, like, we tend to move around a bit on stage, so sometimes it's hard to get like right back to the board to hit the mute, like right. while we're playing. So if I'm like have my back turned or I'm looking at Andy on the on the drums or whatever, I can just bam, right, stop right where you need. Yeah, and it's it's real close. I, I tend to play a little higher up so I can switch between the two. Uh, this guy here, it changes it from a passive to active bass, and that, that also activates these two guys, which kind of like controls uh, the volume and the gain on the uh, pickups individually. So I tend to stay in active because I like that, that real that punchy, punchy move sound. sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyone that's heard us before knows uh, how big I like to go with this stuff. Especially live. Yeah, yeah definitely. Powerful live. Yeah, um, and then you got you know your basic volume and, and reverb on this, but yeah, like I said, this thing's... This thing's my baby, and uh, it's gotten me through some pretty good shows. <laughs> nice, cool. So I noticed you're going, first you're going right into the volume pedal, right? Yeah, yeah, I like to start in the volume pedal, because um, I, I really like to end on the DI here, and I'll, I'll get more into that a little later, but it's just, it seems like a natural start for me. I can control almost everything from here. Right. You Before can see, it. like, it mutes really easily. It, it, I don't really have a lot of headroom on the volume pedal, but I kind of like it that way. Um, yeah, it's, it's your basic uh, Ernie Ball VP volume pedal. I believe Sam's got the same one. Um, I love it. These things can take a beating, and, and with our band, sometimes you definitely need a pedal that can that can do that. Um, next here is is the the Russian Big Muff pedal. Uh, they discontinued these a little while ago, but I'm really happy I got my hand on them. As you can see here, like even like my clean tone tends to be pretty big and boomy and. and really like bottom heavy but then like we want to do like the real wall of sound stuff and yeah it just like overpowers everything uh, it's it's honestly like one of my favorite fuzz pedals that I've ever played with uh, I had the death by audio fuzz war for a long time I, I still do um, that's kind of evolved into a studio uh, pedal more than a live one just because like I have no control over that thing like you switch that on and it's just bam all over the place so this, this I like because it allows me to shape the tone a little bit. Um, I tend to play through a lot of different amps. Uh, I don't always get the chance to bring my own rig with me. So I like to be able to just like adjust uh, basically on the fly. Um, this next pedal here is the, uh, the Full Tone Super Trim. It's this uh, great little uh, tremolo pedal I bought at uh, the old G guitar store in New Haven, Connecticut a couple years back. Um, you know, it's pretty basic. I wish it had a tap tempo. It doesn't, but even so, like, these knobs are really, like, spot on. Yeah, I've, like, I like... So you imagine. can, like, really, like, put it exactly where you want it. You can go to double speed as well. Okay, so that's with the speed switch. Yeah, right. so you can, you know, if you're at double speed, you slow it down a little bit. Uh, I like to do some stuff like, you know, if I got that going and this going at the same time. What's great about these knobs too is that they're really easy to control with your feet. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's basic stuff. It, it's really cool for uh, when we're doing like the really noisy, like ambient parts of our set, where we're just kind of like making noise to go from one song to the other, or we got like a big ending going. Uh, and then you got a mix here, so that allows it kind of like to blend the tremolo with just the clean mix. So as you see here. Kind of hear like a little bit of a flutter, but not like the full um, cut and everything. Um, I don't tend to use this switch that much. 
it switches it from a uh, a basic uh, like start stop tremolo to more of a wave. Oh, I swear. Yeah, exactly. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. Um, I tend to just stay on the wave because I, I just love the way that sounds. Nice smooth. Yeah. yeah. Um, here, I think anyone that has a pedal board might already know what this is. Uh, Holy Grail reverb here. Oh, okay. Um, you got three settings on it: the spring, the hall. I, I never use a flirt. I like using the hall mostly. Um, if I crank this up, and, and you guys will probably see me do this live a lot, where I have like the tremolo and the verb going together, and I can make some really weird like spacey sounds. It's great for transitional stuff. Um, and sometimes I like to just kind of like shape the tone a little bit during uh, some of our quieter stuff, like um, like we marvel at man's machines and stuff. Like this thing's on the entire time, and it's just like real clean reverb. Give it some nice space. Yeah, it, it's it sounds real cool and ambient. Uh, I just I love the way it sounds. Um, I had the bigger one right over there for the longest time, but. Uh, it's great. I mean, it's a, they're essentially the exact same pedal, but I, I just love having the little guy because obviously I don't have a lot of real estate here. Right, right. Um, and then you're going right into... From here, I'm jumping over to the Akai Head Rush, um, which is kind of like two pedals in one. Uh, first, it's basically a, a delay pedal with a tap tempo on it, so I'll just like... That gives me my tempo, and then I can just... stuff like a lot of again mostly transitional stuff but I've been uh, using it into more and more new songs lately um, I got this because uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Brian Cook and Russian circles and like these arms of snakes and all that so you know I'm always looking up uh, Brian's gear and everything and he you know the way he described it and like the way he used it in the videos and so I was just like I gotta get this thing to fit right into exactly. the West possible. yeah it, and it, it really fit like a glove and um a lot of the the bass from We Marvel at Man's Machines came from uh, I was been I was listening to a lot of Hammock at the time and I just the tone of that bass is just absolutely gorgeous and uh, I, I like the the delay that they used on that so a, a lot of like the influence of that song in particular was kind of be, between this and listening to a lot of Hammock and sort of just ripping them off I guess yeah um, after that this goes into a loop station. And what's cool about this guy is that I can pretty much build off of it. So say I'm doing that ambient stuff here. That's gone. And then I like to kind of just swell into that. guy off and then just start with like the whole shebang going at once essentially and um sort of build songs that way. Uh, I'm not much of a songwriter, so I like to just kind of, I guess for lack of a better term, I jam with myself on this thing. Build some ideas. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think we're going to be trying to do more of that in the future as far as our songwriting process goes. So that'll be uh, really exciting to see what I can do with this guy. Um, 
After that, I go into probably the most important pedal on this board, which is the, uh, the Sansamp DI here. Um, I always say that if for some reason something happens live, I lose power or something like that, if I can only pick one pedal to play with, it's, it's this guy. I, I, I'm happy to sacrifice all my effects for this. This basically shapes my entire tone. Um, I've seen some people use it as a drive pedal, um, or, or just sort of like a, I don't, like a compression pedal sometimes, but I, I tend to just leave this on at all times, because because I play with a lot of different amps, like house gear or things like that, I like to just have like my universal one sound, my one tone, right. and that's it right there. Like I, I've shaped that to be exactly to my settings. Um, no matter what I'm plugged into, I'm, I'm going to sound the way I want to sound, and, and that's all because of that. Um, I absolutely love that pedal, so I'll probably never part ways with it. Great. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thanks so much for coming by, man. Well, it dude, was thank great, you. To, great to learn.